So we're out here at our proving grounds at UAV Direct. Uh, what we're going to go through here are a little bit of basic flight operations and how to calibrate your compass. I also recommend whenever we're going to be flying out here, wear some sunglasses. My girlfriend left these in the car, so I'm just going to wear hers. Not making a fashion statement. I just can't see because it's really bright out here. So invest in some glasses, some sunglasses that are probably a little better than mine. This is our proving ground. What we want to do whenever we're indoors, don't turn on the aircraft inside and carry it outside. Leave everything powered off until we come outside. Find yourself a nice plot of land that is not on concrete, that is not on asphalt, that is not on a hard surface besides grass. Uh, this will save you many, many propellers. This will also save you from tipping over and wrecking up some stuff that you don't want to wreck up. Otherwise, you'll call me for some parts. So, first and foremost, we have our radio transmitter here. Comes with all kinds of nice little guides. This unit tends to, uh, happens to have a, an FPV setup on it. Uh, yours may or may not, just depending on which aircraft you have. Um, this is a Phantom 2. We have it set up with a GoPro. You might have a Phantom 2 Vision, you might have a Phantom 2 Vision Plus, you might even just have a Phantom 1. Doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Uh, by default, this aircraft is not set in NASA mode. This is just our standard configuration. So the very first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and turn on our radio transmitter. Set it down, don't even worry about it for now because we've got some other stuff we need to do first. We wanna go ahead and turn on our aircraft. Double press this button here once and then again until it chimes at us. Set it on the ground. Leave it alone, just leave it alone. Come down here, cameraman. We'll see that the light here on the back, hard to kind of see right here, but it's blinking yellow. Set it down, look, look at it, maybe get it in the shade. It's gonna blink yellow for a while. It's doing a couple of things. Right now the aircraft is searching for some GPS satellite. And it's also warming up the IMU on board the aircraft. This is gonna ensure that the aircraft flies properly. We don't want to put our hand above here. We don't want to be holding onto the case because all of that is going to diminish our GPS coverage. So now it's blinking green at us. It's telling us it's okay to fly. It feels okay. That doesn't necessarily mean that it has more than six satellites. We're going to want to go ahead and check that out. So since this is a Phantom 2, I'm going to come around here and I'm going to turn on our GoPro so we can see where we're flying. And it's good. So we'll come back over to our transmitter and we'll check our GPS. Now, whether or not you have the Phantom 2 Vision, Vision Plus, or the GoPro with FPV, we're gonna be able to see how many satellites we have. We're gonna make it a little easier to see that by removing this screen. So what we need to do is get it on a proper channel where we can see what's going on here. And we can see right here in the top corner of our monitor, as soon as the battery goes away, we have 11 satellites that we're currently connected to. That is really, really good. So one of the things we don't want to do is launch this aircraft from concrete. I can't emphasize that enough. Concrete typically has rebar underneath it. Rebar has a lot of iron. Iron is ferric, which means that it, it, can, it can be magnetic. That can screw up the electromagnetic compass on the aircraft. Watch our do's and don'ts video after this and you'll see what we're talking about. So we have our screen, everything is turned on. It's a little bit dim in the camera lens, but I can see it just fine right now. The very first thing that we want to do now that the aircraft is mostly on level ground and we've left it sitting here, now we've got 13 satellites. That's really, really good. First thing we want to do, calibrate that compass. One, two, three, four, five on that right switch. And now we'll see that the, the lights on the back of the aircraft are holding solid yellow. This is so simple and nobody does this or everybody should be doing this. A lot of people don't and then they wonder why flyaways happen. Every time you fly, seriously, every time you fly, it doesn't matter if you travel 10 miles, 20 miles, uh, or you go to Argentina. Every time you fly this aircraft, calibrate the compass. It's so easy. All you have to do is this. Turn it around 360 degrees. Now notice that. The light just changed to green. Now what we do is we hold it to where the camera's facing down. The front of the aircraft is down. Rotate it another 360 degrees, sometimes a little bit further, but the light will blink at us when it's happy. And it's happy. The gimbal's not so happy, but it'll get happy again. For basic flight, we've left on our, our little uh, guide here on how to control the aircraft. Our left switch governs two things. We can set it up to where uh, up on the left throttle here is going to cause your aircraft to ascend, to rise, to gain altitude. Down is going to do just the opposite. It's going to lower the aircraft. Left and right on our switch here, or on our joystick here, uh, are going to enable the aircraft to yaw. Yaw literally means to rotate in place on one axis through the center of the aircraft. 
On our right stick, that's gonna govern pitch and roll. That's just movement. It doesn't matter to know pitch and, and, and roll so much as it, as it means um, pay attention to what it's doing. Up means forward in the direction of the camera. Down is gonna bring it back towards the direction of the battery or where we're gonna be standing when we're flying. Left and right, the same. You're gonna move to the left, it's gonna move to the right. Now, that can change depending on your orientation. The basics of flight are gonna dictate that we're just gonna stay behind the aircraft. We're gonna always be facing the battery and the camera is always gonna be facing away from us. So we're gonna go through a very basic pattern here, get it up in the air and do a little box. Practice flying in little boxes until you feel confident. And then we'll show you what happens when your orientation changes. Now I'm standing off to the side of this aircraft uh, and, and as you can see, uh, we have the battery facing out this way, camera is facing over here. I want to be standing behind the aircraft, give, give it 10, 15 feet. But the very first thing that we have to do to get this aircraft started is to un unlock our props. That's very simple. Down into the center, it's going to get them started to spin. When we step away from the aircraft and, and we're a good 10 to 15 feet behind it, uh, this is a good time to take notice about the condition of the aircraft. Throttle up just a little bit here and there. So you can listen to your props, listen to your motors. You shouldn't hear any grinding. It should be nice and smooth. When we're ready for liftoff of the aircraft, it's pretty simple. Right now, I've got a little bit of a tailwind behind us. So I know which way the aircraft might want to drift and it's going to be towards, it's forward. On your first flight, practice without wind if you can. I'm going to show you how to, to go ahead and compensate for that because those are the conditions that we're presented with today. So basically, you just want to counteract that slightly. If you know the wind is behind you, the best choice to do is going to be to turn off the aircraft, rotate to where you're facing into the wind. It's going to make things a lot easier. But just to keep things basic, we'll go ahead and take off now. As you can see on my left stick here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle, but I'm going to be ready with this stick to compensate. I'm gonna go backwards into the wind if I feel it's gonna to drift too far to the, to, the, to the forward direction of the aircraft. And it's that simple. Even though it's blowing 10 or 15 miles an hour right now, aircraft is mostly wanting to stay in the same spot. That's one of the unique things about these aircraft, any UAS or UAV, is the fact that they want to stay in place. They're using GPS as well as that electromagnetic compass to stay right in the exact same spot that we last put it in. It wants to follow its last known instruction. So if I set it over here and I take my hands off of the controller, it's going to want to stay right there. So now let's learn a little bit more about the movement of the aircraft while we have it in the air. As mentioned earlier, up on our throttle is going to increase our altitude. Down is going to decrease our altitude. Going left on our left stick is going to yaw the aircraft left. Going right is going to yaw the aircraft to the right. Let's not pay attention too much to yaw at this time. What we want to go ahead and do is just focus on the basics of movement. So, up on our control stick here, it's going to move the aircraft forward, away from us if we're facing the battery. Bringing it down is going to bring it back towards us. Left is left and right is right. We get a nice little indicator here about which way the aircraft is facing. If we're looking up at it, you can see two green lights facing you, two red lights facing away. In evening, in morning, you're gonna see that a lot more clearly. Right now in the daytime, it's a little bit hard to see, so we have to act upon our own intuition onto which way the aircraft is facing. It's not hard. In fact, it involves so little, it's gonna be very easy on you. But Let's draw a box in the sky. We've got our aircraft up maybe 15 feet now. This is a good spot to get to know your aircraft. Really, really simple flight. So what we want to do is we want to go forward, right, back, left, forward. We're just going to draw a little box. and we're in the same spot. So show the control for that. We're gonna go forward, right, back, left, and we're back where we started. Those are the basics of flight. 
we can talk about collective controls on the aircraft and how we can do really, really interesting things like tight figure eights in the air, but these aircraft are mostly working aircraft. You want to get something done with them, keep it simple. So let's show you a little bit of what can happen and how to regain posture or orientation with the aircraft if you do lose sight of which way the aircraft is facing. We'll take it up and away for this. It's all the way over there, about 100 foot away now. So I'm going to face you. I'm just going to rotate the aircraft a little bit. I don't know which way it's facing now, but I'd like to know. So, this is where a lot of people can get in the pickle pretty quick. The easiest way to figure out which way the aircraft is, is not going to be governed by the left stick. We're not going to go up or down or rotate it anymore. Don't freak out at this moment. Don't freak out if you're far away and you can't tell which way you're facing. It's a UAV. It's a little DJI Phantom II. If you take your hands off the controls, it's going to stay right there and you can rest confidently in that. So. If we want to regain control of this aircraft, or rather of our own orientation with the aircraft, all we need to do is apply a quick little test to figure out which way it's facing. I know that I am right here and the aircraft is there. It's hard to tell any other movement besides an A to B relationship. So I want to find out which way is me. What we need to establish is a point of orientation with the aircraft. I'm standing here, the aircraft is over there. We know our left and right, but the further you go out, the harder it is going to be to be able to tell or ascertain which way the aircraft is facing. So we need to apply a test. We need to figure out which way that aircraft is facing so we can bring it home. Now I could cheat and I could use our FPV monitor because that little diamond is telling me right now it's facing a certain direction. But I don't want to cheat. I want to show you how to do this. All we need to do is apply a quick test. Pick a direction on the remote, typically towards you. That's the easiest way to tell which way the back of the aircraft is facing. If it comes back towards us, we know that we're facing away and bringing it back is the only thing we have to do. Let's see what happens. I'm applying a little bit of rear direction on it. And the aircraft is going 100% away from me. That means what I need to do is I either need to think backwards about that and hit forward to bring the aircraft, which is what is happening, or I need to get the aircraft a little bit higher so I can see the arms and I need to rotate it 180 degrees because I was 180 degrees off. So that being said, now back should be back towards me, forward should be forward, left is left and right is right. An important thing to know about that is if we are, again, 180 degrees skewed, forward becomes back back becomes forward, left becomes right, and right becomes left. Activating some of those features in NASA mode can actually solve a lot of that questioning that you might have about orientation. But for now, the basics of flight, it's good enough that we know just this. This is gonna save your day many a time. Practice, practice, practice. Draw your little boxes in the sky. Go forward to the right, Bring it back, and go to the left. That simple maneuver is gonna open up a whole world of things that you can do with the aircraft, especially if you have FPV. Then you're gonna be able to fly while looking through the camera. Another practice that can be done with our simple box. Rotate the aircraft 180 degrees. Now draw your box in reverse. Forward is back, right is left. and so forth. That's all it takes. So now, just to close this out, we've obviously enjoyed the battery a little bit too long on our aircraft. The rear lights are now blinking red at us. That's telling us that we have our first bird battery warning. So what we want to do is bring down the aircraft. And it's a little bit windy out here, but I'm going to show you how to get this. What we want to do is rotate our aircraft to where we're facing the wind going to really help because now we see that it wants to blow back behind us a little bit. What we want to do is give it a little bit of an approach path. Land with a little bit of forward movement and once you start getting close to the ground make final preparations. Once you're about six, uh, six inches to about an inch go ahead and drop your power and you're going to be good.
can do that all the way in wind speeds up to 20 miles an hour. After that, I really wouldn't try flying. Not yet. Not yet.